Good evening. I'm Calvin Samuel, Methodist Minister for the towns of Hockley, Rochford and Rayleigh in the county of Essex. Welcome to Covenant Community Online Evening Prayer. We are internationally dispersed and socially distant, but we come together in worship as a covenant community. Evening prayers tonight are the final ones in this format. We've been doing these every Tuesday night now for the past six months. Uh, this is the 27th version of uh, evening prayers. And if you add in uh, extra ones like Maundy Thursday and uh, Good Friday, I think we've done 29 uh, evening prayers in the last six months. From next week, our prayers will shift format and be included as part of a Bible study. It will also shift platforms from YouTube to Zoom, which I hope will enable greater interaction. Uh, but for tonight, our prayers as usual are drawn from the Methodist worship book. You won't need a copy, but please do join me in the words of the liturgy when they come up on your screen in yellow, or if you're listening on audio and working from a transcript, uh, the words in the bold type. Uh, and as usual, I'll be breaking 24-hour Tuesday fast immediately following evening prayers. So let's quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to come before the Lord in prayer. Be swift, O God, to save us. Come quickly, Lord, to help us. There is one body and one spirit just as there is one hope held out in God's call to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us make our confession to God. If we have fallen into despair, Lord, forgive us. If we have failed to hope in you, Lord, forgive us. If we have been fearful of death, Lord, forgive us. If we have forgotten the victory of Christ, Lord, forgive us. In silence we bring more personal confessions to God. May the living God raise us from despair, give us victory over sin, and set us free in Christ. Amen. We say the prayer of the evening. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our psalms tonight are Psalm 137 and 138. Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs and our tormentors us for mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. But how could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites the day of Jerusalem's fall, how they said, tear it down, tear it down, down to its foundations. O daughter Babylon, you devastator, Happy shall they be who pay you back what you have done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rock. Psalm 138 
I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness, for you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Amen. And our New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel according to Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 30. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child, put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we come to our prayers of intercession, if you're watching this live with me here on YouTube, I invite you to add your own prayers to the chat section. Uh, if you're watching this later on, the chat section will be disabled, but please do add them to the comment section below. So, in the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. 
Remember, O Lord, in your love, the church throughout the world, those recently baptized and confirmed, and those whose baptism or confirmation has been postponed because of the pandemic, and those who minister to others. May your whole church know your power and be a sign that Christ is risen, Lord of life. Hear us in your love. Remember in your love the world that you have made. Those who seek a fair and a proper use of the world's resources. All who strive for justice and peace among the nations. We pray especially today for those wrestling with systemic racism and injustice. May the whole earth be transformed by mercy and rejoice in hope. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love those who suffer, the victims of violence and injustice, and all who mourn today. May all in need find comfort, strength, and freedom in the living Christ. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Remember in your love those who have died. Those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone. May all your children receive grace and light according to their needs and come at last to share with all the saints in life eternal. Lord of life, hear us in your love. Gracious God, we ask these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Saviour. Amen. In silence, let us bring more personal intercessions before the Lord. We draw all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions, and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death, and lead us into fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We conclude as we share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so very much for joining me for evening prayers tonight, the last in this current format. And if you've been one of those joining me uh, every Tuesday across the last six months, I'm really uh, grateful for your uh, fellowship as we've journeyed across this interesting time in our lives. As I said at the beginning, uh, and have been uh, saying for the last few weeks now, Tuesday nights will change once we get into October. Uh, and so evening prayers will be incorporated into uh, a Bible study. Uh, and that Bible study begins next week, Tuesday, 7 p.m. British Summer Time via Zoom. We will be traversing 1 Thessalonians uh, and looking at the idea of the triumphant life. So if you can, uh, join me uh, for those Bible studies. Uh, and if you're a member of one of the three churches, you should have an email indicating how you can join. Uh, if you are 
uh, unaware of that, do get in touch and I'd be very happy to uh, share with you the Zoom connection details. Uh, sticking with October, uh, on the 7th of October, so the day after the Bible study begins, I'll be leading uh, Worship Academy here in the South End and Lee Circuit. Uh, and this month we'll be looking at how to be anti-racist, so do join me uh, for that. Uh, and that will be also uh, on Zoom with some elements pre-prepared on, on YouTube. And the following week on the 15th of October, I'll be hosting an anti-racism reading group. We'll be reading the book Natives by a black British author called Akala. And the hope for the anti-racism reading group is that we reflect on some of the issues that are behind some of the Black Lives Matter protests that we've seen in this country and across the world, and reflecting on some of the structures that uh, contain unconscious bias and indeed systemic racism. So do join us for that if you can. And of course, I'll be back on Sunday as usual, 9.30 a.m. British summertime for our next Sunday celebration as we continue our journey into the book of Acts. So I shall see you then. God bless you.